This is the third lecture of the longitudinal dynamic stabilities, and in this lecture, we will focus on the uh, fugoid oscillation or fugoid mode. So, for fugoid oscillation, let's first look at uh, some concepts about this mode. So, the fugoid oscillatory mode has a small damping coefficient, which is about 0.1. And if we compare this damping coefficient with respect to the um, short period pitching oscillation, it's much smaller. And uh, the period time of the fugoid mode can be uh, between 30 seconds to 120 seconds. So it's much longer period compared to the SPPO. SPPO usually has uh, period time about within 10 seconds so it's much quicker to complete and if we look at the diagram of the fugoid mode so the aircraft is neglected and the curves are the trajectories of the aircraft and it looks like a sinusoid wave and it's like a sine wave and we can see the amplitude damps very slowly and this is because of the small damping coefficient. Is that right? Okay. And since the damping coefficient is very small, and now we can make assumption to study this uh, fugoid mode further. So the assumption is that we assume the damping coefficient is negligible, which means cos is about zero. <coughs> In this case, we can have the conservation of kinetic energy and the potential energy. And for example, in here, the blue dot indicates the location where the aircraft has maximum speed but minimum altitude. But for the um, orange or red dot, at that location, the aircraft has minimum speed but maximum altitude. So throughout the course, there, there's a conservation of kinetic energy and potential energy, but it's provided um, with the assumption of negligible damping coefficient. So we have conservation of ener kinetic energy and a potential energy. And if we, if we write it down in, math, uh, in notations, so half mv squared plus mgh equals uh, constant. So that's energy conservation. So we got this energy conservation equation, but it's in the integral form. Usually when we um, do the analysis, and we prefer the differential form, so we do the difference of this equation, each component, and then we can have the differential form of the governing equation for the fugoid mode. Okay, and we know the change in height um, is actually the change in z uh, in z direction in z position. But since the the positive orientation of z axis is pointing towards the earth so it's opposite of h that's why we get a negative sign and uh, the change in, in velocity v is actually the change in streamlined velocity small u okay so then we can rewrite the equation by replacing dv and the dh it becomes m v u minus g mgz equals zero, okay? We can rewrite it, it becomes u equals gz divided by v, okay? And then we also know the vertical force is opposite of lift, okay? And then lift is c or half rho v squared times s, yeah? Okay, so we can do the derivative partial z partial u, it's uh, then minus c l rho v s, Okay, so now we need to work further, and uh, similar as the SPPO mode, we need to use the Newton's second law, and it becomes z equals z u times u, and on the right hand side becomes m uh, z second derivative. That's the um, acceleration. Okay, and now we are just considering one component, which is a uh, uh, force change due to the streamlined velocity, and we already have that z u. And um, okay, so if we if we uh, replace z u with the minus c or rho v s, then we can have this equation on the uh, last line. Okay, and if we re reorganize it, put them on the same side, which becomes like this. Okay, so it's closer. 
and you can see the unknown is z we have second derivative and also zero order second order and a zero order okay and again we know cl is actually in balance with uh, uh, gravity which is mg so we have cl equals mg divided by half rho v squared times s now we know cl we just plug in cl do reorganize it and then we have z2 dot plus 2g squared v squared times z equals zero so are you are you familiar with this so it's again the governing equation is written in the ode format good Okay, let's go further and we are just pasting the previous equation here remember the damping coefficient c is zero in this case that's the assumption we uh, introduced at the beginning okay so the ODE for mass spring damper system that's what we um, we are introduced at the beginning of this uh, lecture and so we can have one to one comparison apparently because c is zero so a z dot first order first derivative is not showing here then we can have omega n equals uh, square root 2 times g divided by v and uh, i need to indicate here n uh, this omega n that's a natural frequency for the simple harmonic motion and under the damping coefficient assumption of damping coefficient being zero okay and if we carry on then the period time is 2 pi divided by omega n it's uh, written like this or 0.453 times v because we already know g and pi and the unit in seconds okay so the above derivation is usually called the Lanchester analysis and that's um, because Lanchester is the first person who did this analysis and now you can see um, the target is to write down the ODE governing equation for the fugue mode it's the same for the SPPO that's a target first to write down the governing uh, ODE equation and then we can compare have one to one comparison with the ODE for mass spring damper system so we can find the natural frequency and the period time or the damping ratio but the exceptional case is for the fugue mode the first of all assumption is the damping coefficient is zero and that's why through the Lanchester analysis we can only get the natural frequency and the period time without any information of the damping coefficient because it's assumed to be zero negligible okay so you may wonder how to initiate the fugoid mode and the fugoid mode can actually be initiated by the pilot through holding the aircraft in a shallow dive the first dive until the true airspeed has increased by about 15 to 20 percent and then simply let it go and then the aircraft will come up again and then dive again so after a few um, periods it will return to its original location so that's a fugoid mode so far to conclude uh, at the beginning we uh, derive the ODE for mass spring damper system and get familiar with the damping ratio period natural frequency something like that and then we derive, discussed about the short period pitching oscillation and finally in here we've discussed the fugoid mode and now you should appreciate the difference between the SPPO and the fugoid mode and especially the derivations